Well, welcome back uh, inside Mission Control. You're now close up at the Public Affairs Console. And I, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, Laura Lucier, who is the robotics officer, is actually on console all day today. And uh, of course, she's keenly interested in uh, all of the activities associated with uh, uh, the robotic arm of the station, Canada Arm 2, but uh, also, of course, the, the EVA that you just saw Ernie Bell describe. Uh, as part of his uh, press conference a week or so ago. So, Laura, thanks a lot for stepping off over there and coming over here and joining us. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Kyle. It's always nice to have a little break. <laughs> well, um, I was describing earlier, you know, the robotics function is uh, integral to just about every spacewalk. Um, but you guys um, have a, a very big task associated with this flight, but I, it's it's no better to hear from the experts. So, um, and of course, you you've been here. You 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 sent me a note. You've been here 11 years now. Have you been a front room? How long have you been front room flight controller? I've been a front front room flight controller since. Oh boy, <laughs> you put me on the spot there. Um, four or five years now. So so no stranger to uh, what happens in the front room. And of course, we, you know, everybody has uh, backroom support. But uh, talk a little bit about uh, specifically what this EVA has in store for you guys. Um, and, and there's some little nuances that we'll talk about, too. But talk to me about what you guys have planned for tomorrow. Well, for those of you who are just watching the uh, EVA briefing video overview, you saw the animations of what we'll be doing. And uh, the big thing about Canada Arm 2 is it gives the EVA crew a good stable work platform. So if they need to reach things that otherwise they couldn't easily reach, or in this case, maneuver a big piece of hardware. So we've got these two big grapple bars. They need to be moved from the payload or U accommodation, or the POA as we call it, right. taken off of there and moved to their permanent stow locations on the ISS truss. So those are big pieces of hardware. They're tough to move around. So we're going to uh, put Luca on the end of the arm and we'll be able to use the arm to help maneuver him while he's holding those big pieces of hardware into position. Do you, um, when you have a new crew member like Luca is, of course y'all all, I assume y'all all work together before they even launched. So um, when you have a new crew member, you tend to train with that person on the on the end of the arm for stability just for maybe for familiarization uh, but once they get past that like their second or third EVA they they may be a free floater uh, that's what I've seen in the past is that kind of how that was planned for him or or, or does it matter I don't know what decision making went into this specific EVA. Uh, certainly, free float tasks are, have their own complexities. Especially and because of the size of the ORU that you mentioned. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, moving on the arm also has its own nuances. Uh, in particular, one of the big things is the coordination and the communication between the arm operator, who will be Karen inside, and Luca on the end of the arm. They have to make sure that they've rehearsed all of their communication, all their coordination. There'll be points during the EVA where Luca will be asking Karen, okay, move me one meter to my left or two meters forward or backwards or to the side. And so all of those calls and communications are what we really rehearse ahead of time and we need to make sure our crew members are working well together on all of that. Now, you mentioned the RUs. You, you have a couple of images. I don't know if you want to talk to those now, but um, there's your first one. Yes, that's right. And uh, here you can see this is kind of just a, a screenshot similar to the uh, briefing overview animations that I know you guys have been showing recently. And this is a picture of, uh, well, an animated picture of Luca on the end of the arm reaching out to grab those grapple bars. And you can kind of see the grapple bars in the center of the arm. Of course, we've highlighted Luca in bright red there, so he's easy to pick out. You can see how he's perched on the end of the arm reaching out to grab these big pieces of equipment. In the next picture, you can see a shot of him holding the grapple bars in position at their permanent stow place. This is the grapple bars that are going onto the starboard truss. And of course, Chris will be free flow, as you mentioned, and coming in to help bolt those down into place. And the third shot is just a similar position of the second grapple bars being stowed over on the port side of the truss. So this is a, a, a real good example of the choreography, if you will, between robotics and the humans, obviously the two crew members that perform the spacewalk. Um, and you talked about the training, but how, how much do you, do you have an idea of how much 
you guys trained, knowing this was coming, how much you trained uh, before they actually flew? Absolutely. Uh, well over a year ago, we started working on the detailed procedures. Of course, as you and I'm sure your viewers know, we spend a lot of time sussing out every single little detail, and we develop for the crew line-by-line -line instructions or procedures on how to perform these operations. So we started working on those well over a year ago, and then, of course, we started training the crew. As you probably also know, our crew members spend a lot of time traveling. So in between their various trips to Russia, Japan, Europe, uh, we had training sessions with them here in the United States. And we taught them, first of all, generically, how the arm operates, how to fly the canned arm too, but then also the details of the specific task. And we use a lot of different facilities to do that. We did a lot of training sessions in the virtual reality laboratory. Together with the EVA crew members, they wear their helmets and they get to see a visualization of the space station and with Karen at uh, simulated arm controls actually moving them around and that's one of our biggest opportunities to rehearse it. We also use uh, the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, which has a mock-up of the right. arm, an actual operating hydraulic arm, and uh, we practice maneuvering the crew members around in there. So all of those things together give us a chance to rehearse both that coordination that I was talking about earlier, but also to time everything out because we need to know down to the minute how quickly all of these tasks are going to go. Right. So, so um, y you mentioned the VR lab. That's here at the Johnson Space Center in another building um, over in the space vehicle mock-up facility. Um, another uh, activity, of course, is, you know, after they get up there, you guys aren't all together anymore in terms of face-to-face, -face, that is. Um, but they, they have a, a robotic simulator on board that they can basically rehearse as well, right? That's right. We actually have a couple of different ones. One is called Robot, which actually has joystick hand controllers, just like the real Canada Arm 2 does. And the crew can actually uh, practice moving around a, a virtual arm in a virtual environment. We also have a simulator called Doug. And Doug provides uh, purely graphics, uh, not an opportunity to fly a simulated arm, but an opportunity for the crew to step through or jump this uh, arm and, and simulate flying it through the various positions and so uh, just recently in fact last Friday we had a session for Karen where she had was scheduled for some time to go in and fly through the robotics procedure and revisit them and freshen her memory All right now one of the things I want to mention to everyone is um, Laura is uh, works for the Canadian Space Agency um, she has a, ma a mechanical engineering and aerospace engineering degrees right um, one of the things I'm fascinated by is um, I don't know if telerobotics is the right word, but um, typically uh, when we have uh, crew members on board, um, if there's uh, enough crew members in terms of like U.S. members or over in the U.S. segment, I guess, that are robotically trained, you might have the two folks outside and you have a robotics person. And, and uh, as we did back in shuttle, we would have a backup robotics officer that could spell the person, if it's a long EVA, they take turns, right, over ta or they train for different tasks or take turns. I guess for this one, the thing I'm fascinated by is Karen has no backup on board, so her backup is sitting right here next to me, and so I want you to describe, you know, with your background, this has got to be something that's uh, you know, maybe like the Super Bowl, for I don't know, for robotics, is getting to operate an arm that's, you know, circling the Earth 250 miles up. Absolutely. That's by far uh, my favorite part of my <laughs> job, is that we do have the capability to operate Canada Arm 2 and, of course, uh, Dexter, which is the two-armed robot, from the ground. And for a lot of our operations, uh, moving pieces of hardware around, swapping out, various payloads. We do that completely 100% from the ground. So the crew might go to sleep one night, wake up the next morning, and the robot is in a completely different place from where they <laughs> left it, which is, uh, I'd always like to go and you know tap on the window and look inside, but right. we're not quite at that stage. But um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, and you're right, it's very surreal to be able to sit here in mission control and send commands and move this 
enormous <laughs> robot way up there on the space station. Right. So as Karen's backup. Now for this EVA, uh, we won't actually be moving the arm from the ground. Uh, obviously when you have a crew member on the end of the arm and right. uh, the time pressures of a spacewalk going on, you want to make sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. So it will all be Karen moving the arm. Unfortunately, she won't have anyone to spell her off. But that second person uh, performs a lot of checks. They're making sure that um, the cameras are set up the way you would need to monitor tight clearances or uh, tough positions that you're getting into. They also make sure that appropriate software um, files are loaded for the command parameters for the arm. Additionally, uh, when we move the arm, a lot of the time we move it using joysticks, but a lot of time we'll also type in a final position that we want the arm to maneuver to and essentially press a, a big go button and the arm will maneuver to that position. And of course, as you can imagine, making sure you type in that destination position accurately is a very big deal. Right. And so that is the kind of thing that the backup person, what we call the M2, uh, would do. And so so we'll be performing those functions from the ground. So there'll be various points in uh, in the procedure tomorrow where Karen will be holding uh, and waiting to get a call uh, from myself through the Capcom uh, to say, yes, that destination looks good or the appropriate file is loaded, you're go to proceed. And so that's how we'll be doing that function from the ground tomorrow. Great, so quite a bit of um, choreography between uh, the ground. Uh, you may not hear it on NASA TV, but um, uh, through the flight director, through Capcom up, so you'll hear a lot of interaction, not only between the EVA officer, uh, Ernie Bell obviously and his team, but also with, with you and, and your team as well. That's right. So it's a, it's a very intricate process, and, and obviously robotics is a big part of uh, what you'll see tomorrow. And um, um, Laura was kind enough to take a few minutes as she is on duty in the room right now on this shift. So she's on until 3, 3.30 this afternoon. So uh, it was great of you to stop by and describe what's in store for tomorrow. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing it all. Thanks a lot for coming by. So am I, my pleasure. That's Laura Lucier. She's uh, the robotics officer here in the room on the current shift, and she'll be on duty tomorrow throughout the uh, EVA that Chris Cassidy and Luca Parmitano will perform beginning uh, just after 7 a.m. by the schedule on Tuesday.